Hey everybody, so today's uh, video blog is going to be on the topic of a surgery that I do, uh, and that surgery is called submandibular gland excision. So uh, what are the submandibular glands? So these are right under here. So the sub means under, mandibular means mandible, so the jawbone. So these are glands that are under the mandible. Um, and if you kind of feel right in this area, um, you can feel kind of two rounded uh, lumps under there, and those are your submandibular glands. Um, so these are uh, two of the multiple glands that you have in your body that produce saliva or spit in your mouth. Um, so sometimes uh, it's uh, something that's appropriate for me to actually go in and surgically remove one of these glands. Uh, most commonly, the reason that I would recommend that and do that um, is because of chronic infection within the gland. Um, and a lot of times that's because the drainage pathway of the gland out under the tongue is blocked, um, usually by some sort of stone uh, or blockage within that uh, submandibular duct. So, you know, usually in patients with that problem, you know, we try medicines first. We try several rounds of antibiotics. Um, and, you know, if the infection is not getting better, you know, the gland remains swollen and uncomfortable. At that point, it can be reasonable to just take it out, um, and typically that will fix the problem uh, of the chronic infection and swelling. So uh, what does the surgery uh, entail with this? Um, so it, this is an outpatient surgery, so it's something where you would have the surgery and go home the same day. Um, I do make an incision kind of right in this area, and the incision's about maybe two inches or so, so it's not a huge incision. Um, and it usually tends to heal very nicely in that area. Um, and basically I go down uh, through the layer of muscle under the skin and then just remove the gland. Um, so specific to this surgery, um, there are a few risks involved. Um, and they, these risks mainly have to do with the nerves that live in this area. Um, so specifically there's a nerve called the marginal mandibular nerve. So this kind of comes down from the front of the ear, loops around, and then comes back up. And what this nerve does is it actually supplies the muscle uh, movement to the mouth or the side of the mouth. So to do this, you need function of that nerve to, to kind of pull the, the mouth uh, out into the side um, when you're frowning. So that's important that we you know, protect that nerve and don't injure it, or you can potentially have weakness of the side of your mouth. Um, additionally, there underneath the submandibular gland is uh, another nerve called the hypoglossal nerve. And this is a nerve that actually supplies movement to the tongue on that side. So if that nerve were to be injured, uh, you could have weakness of the tongue, um, which could potentially affect speech or swallowing. Um, and then finally, the, the last nerve that's involved with this surgery um, is deep underneath the gland, and it's called the lingual nerve. And that nerve actually supplies sensation to the tongue. So um, taste and uh, just sort of fine motor sensation or fine tactile sensation to the tongue. Um, so the one thing to keep in mind is the lingual nerve under the submandibular gland actually has a branch that branches off into the gland itself. So obviously to remove the gland, we have to cut that branch. Um, but I like to do that with minimal damage or stretching of the main trunk of the lingual nerve. But again, there's the, the possibility that you could have temporary or even permanent um, loss of sensation or, or uh, minimal sensation to that side of the tongue. So all of these risks of nerve damage are, are pretty unusual. Uh, knock on wood, none of them happened in my experience, but these are things we have to tell patients about before uh, they go under and have the surgery. Um, you know, other than that, you know, there's always sort of generic surgery risks of scarring, bleeding, and uh, infection. Uh, but these things are also relatively uncommon, but they, they can certainly happen. Uh, so anyway, I hope that's helpful for you. Um, you know, if you're having submandibular gland infections, uh, I can certainly help you with that. And hopefully we can get that under control. So I hope that was helpful for you. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon in the next one.